Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing cardiac muscle contraction. Okay, so we're currently discussing the structure of a sarcomere, which is the contractile, excuse me, unit within cardiac muscle cells. Okay, so so far we've discussed these Z discs, which I'm going to draw in purple, vivid purple here. So these are these structures here. Okay, and we've discussed that the Z discs have these actin filaments attached to them. Okay, so here comes the actin filaments here on this little picture here. So we've got these actin filaments, and you won't just have three. I'm drawing three to make the picture as simple as possible, to make it not too difficult on the eyes. Uh, but you'll have far more than that in reality. Okay, so here are our actin filaments. Now I just want to tell you really what is an actin filament. So the protein actin tin is a very small little globular protein, so it's a little ball, basically. So this is the protein actin. So what is an actin filament? Well, basically, it's a polymer of actin monomers, okay? So basically, you take one of these, and you get loads more of the actin uh, protein, and you join them together, like so, okay? And you can form really long strands of these actin proteins polymerized together like this. Okay, so let me color them in green. And these really long strands of actin proteins joined together in this great polymer uh, is known as an actin filament. Okay, so that's what an actin filament is. So let me just finish this coloring in now that I've started it. I can't finish. Okay, I can't not finish, rather. Okay, so this is actin filament. Okay, so that is what I mean by these green lines that I've drawn here. I mean loads and loads of these actin monomers all polymerized together in a great long filament. Okay, right. Now, uh, in between the, um, the actin filaments, you have another protein disc here, known as the M-disc. So this is called the M-disc. So you have another disc of protein in the center here, and this is called the M disc. So I'm going to draw this in a different color. So here in oops, orange is the M disc. Okay, so this is the M disc. And the M stands for myosin, and you'll see why in a moment. So we also have filaments coming off the M disc and going both ways. So some going this way and some going this way and overlapping with these actin filaments. And these filaments that are coming off the M disc are myosin filaments. So in blue here, these are myosin filaments. Okay, so I'll label those up. So in green, firstly, we have these actin filaments. Okay. And in blue, we have the myosin filaments. Now, let me explain to you uh, what a myosin filament is, because again, myosin protein is a little small protein, and a myosin filament basically is the polymer of many myosin proteins. So the structure of a myosin protein is that you have a fibrous tail, like so, and then coming off at an angle, you have a head here. So this is known as the myosin head, or the myosin light chain, you'll hear it referred to also as. But we'll refer to it as the myosin head in this video. You only need to refer to it as the myosin light chain, really, if you're um, talking about smooth muscle. Okay? And uh, this is the uh, fibrous tail of the myosin protein. Fibrous tail. So I'll color the myosin protein in blue. Whoops. Okay, so in blue here is the myosin protein. Okay, right. So now let's discuss what a myosin filament is. So basically, in order to create a myosin filament, what you do is you take loads of myosin proteins, okay, with their fibrous tails here, and you join them together. You join, well, you join their fibrous tails together. So here's another myosin protein. Here we've added in another one, okay, and another one, and another one, and all the fibrous tails coalesce, basically, to form a filament. And off the side of this filament, you have absolutely loads of these little myosin heads sticking out, basically. Okay, now you will notice that the myosin filament has an orientation to it. All the heads are pointing in a certain direction. Now, this is not trivial, this is important. 
because the heads need to be pointing in a certain direction in order to interact. And in fact, what they're going to do is climb up the actin filaments. So, the myosin filaments which go this way, they will have their heads oriented in the same way as I've drawn in this picture, i.e. their heads would all be pointing towards the actin filaments. Whereas on this side, the myosin filament will be oriented the other way because the actin filaments are oriented the other way. They're going, it, you basically, the myosin heads are always going to point towards the actin uh, filament. So on this side, what you're going to have is you're going to take these myosin heads, uh, sorry, these myosin proteins, you're going to spin them around the other way and aggregate them like this to make a filament that's oriented in the opposite direction to this one over here. Okay, like so. And uh, when you've got these two myosin filaments, what you'll be able to do is uh, climb up the actin filaments in either direction, and this is going to allow for contraction. Okay, so here is this myosin filament. Right, okay, so basically what's going to happen when we stimulate contraction is these myosin filaments, they're going to these myosin filaments on this, the myosin filaments on this side are going to try and climb up the actin filaments. Either they're going to try and climb towards the Z disc over here. Whereas the myosin filaments on this side are going to try and climb towards the Z disc on this side. Now you will notice that there's a problem with this. These ones are pulling this way, and these ones are pulling this way. So the only solution is for these things to move instead, for the myosin disc, the M disc, and the myosin filaments to remain put, and for these two, the Z discs, to move closer, i.e. for the sarcomere to collapse, uh, to contract, rather. And by the way, this entire structure that I have now drawn here, this is a sarcomere. And I've run out of space. Sarcomere. Okay, now let me finish the picture that I drew half-heartedly here. So here are these myosin filaments coming off here, okay, off the side of this Z disc at the center here in orange. Right, now, basically, um, you don't just have one sarcomere, that would be rather rubbish. Instead, what you do is this Z disc, it won't just have nothing attached on this side. What it will have is it will have more actin filaments coming off this side and you'll go along to your next sarcomere here. You'll have another Z disc here. It'll have actin filaments as well. You'll stick an M disc in the middle, and you'll make another one of these sarcomeres. And then you'll continue this process on. So this Z disc again will have um, actin filaments coming off it here, and you'll have actin filaments coming off here, and it will continue on. And then finally, in this final one over here, let's say, you have actin filaments coming off here, then you'll have proteins in the cell membrane off which actin filaments are attached, and then finally an M disc sitting in the middle like this again. So let me put another M disc in here just to finish the picture. So let me make this better by colouring things in again. So in green are all the actin filaments. Okay, so um, these are the actin filaments, these polymers of actin monomers. And the important thing to understand is that you have these entire rows of sarcomere, effectively, uh, which are all... Um, to, you have m loads and loads of sarcomeres in this row like this. So if they all contract, what's going to happen is the entire row is going to end up contracting. And that's going to mean that if this row goes all the way to the other side of the cell, then the whole cell is going to have to contract, because if all the sarcomeres contract, then the cell has no choice, basically. You're going to pull this membrane and this membrane towards one another. Okay, now you won't just have one of these rows of, um, you won't just have one of these rows of sarcomeres, you'll have multiple rows of sarcomeres in your cardiomyocytes, like so. Okay, right, so that's the machinery by which cardiac muscle cells contract. You have these entire rows of sarcomeres, like so, and you'll have more multiple of them, so you'll have them stacked up next to each other, basically. And when all the sarcomeres contract, then the whole row will contract, and that will bring the two sides of the cell closer together, and the cardiomyocyte will contract. 
Okay, right. Now, why does this lead to the striated appearance? Well, basically, these myosin filaments, they are darker than the actin filaments. So, where you have the myosin filament, this appears dark. So, here, well, actually, we'll do it on this one here. Oh, no, we're going to have to do it on this one here. So, um, here is the myosin filament. Well, actually, this is where the myosin filament is as well. So, you have loads of these points where the myosin filaments are, okay? And when you have multiple uh, of these rows all stacked next to each other, the sarcomeres will be in the same position. So, you'll have another sarcomere here, which will have the same proteins at the same points, basically, like so. Okay, so all the myosin will be in a line, basically, throughout the cardiomyocyte. So you'll get these darker lines, and these are the A-bands, basically. So this is an A-band, because the myosin is a thicker filament, and it's darker uh, when you look at it down a microscope. Okay, and where the myosin isn't, so from here to here, that band will appear lighter, basically, and that is what corresponds to the isotropic bands. These are light bands that you see in the cardiomyocyte. So you see dark bands alternating with light bands, alternating with dark bands, etc. Uh, so it's basically where the myosin is, that's dark. Where the myosin isn't, that's light. Then the myosin is again, and that's dark. And that's why cardiac muscle cells appear striated. Okay, so that's the structure of cardiomyocytes now done. What we're going to now look at is excitation contraction coupling, but we'll do that in the next video.